Okay, we're ready to go ahead and bore our first hole. We've got our cutter set. Say it slides into this slot right here. And you will want to push it back until it clicks and engages. Once you have that done, it's always a good idea to crank it down and just visually check to see if that bit is hitting right on the edge all the way around the bore. And spin it around by hand. Make sure it's making contact. Sometimes it may drop just inside the top of the bore and that may be due to the, the 45 that's usually cut at the top of the bore or even if somebody uses a uh, ring cutter at the top of the bore you don't see that a whole lot anymore all right seems to be hitting four spots so now you come up here to your power switch flip it on and to start your cutting you see you've got this collar here this right here works the hand crank but it also engages the gearbox which is, this gearbox is two speeds you got low and high you never want to change gears from low to high or either way while the machine is running it will crash but uh I always run my machine on low speed. You get a much better finish. Um, you can run it on high speed if you're sleeving a block and you need to cut the holes quicker. But uh, right now it's on low speed. Come back up to this collar. And like I say, you want to push on it to get it to engage. I usually push it and then tap it in. And come down here. And when it starts cutting, you want to hear it cut all the way around, not a hit skip. And we have it cutting all the way around. It's making a good sound. And now you just wait while it goes all the way down. Let's see if I can't move a light up underneath the block so that you can see it cutting. down below and check your chip pan to catch all the, uh, the chips falling. And it's rather difficult to see on the camera the light is so bright. But you'll actually see somewhat of a, uh, a line all the way around the bore where it's cutting. Again, you always want to hear a good cut all the way around. You don't want to hear a hit skip noise. If you do, you can come up here, take your wrench or a flat bar, and you actually pry that and pop it out of gear, or just flip the uh, power switch. It's about halfway down now.
when you get to the very bottom of the bore, you will hear a hit skip noise. That's because the cutter is actually uh, exiting part of the cylinder. But you want to continue cutting part of the webbing in the uh, the bottom of the bore, right where the uh, the main bearing. I guess webbing is where the uh, main board threads and all are. You want to cut it down as low as you can because when you go back to hone it, if you leave a lot of it sitting up, it'll break your hone thing. And uh, usually I watch the chips at the bottom of the bore. And when they start moving, I'll go and disengage it lever right there and sometimes you'll hear it just all together stop because there is no webbing at uh, some of the front of the cylinders all right and I just disengaged the cutter right there so it's essentially a neutral on the feed once you disengage this Reach up, flip the power switch off. Okay, and when removing, you will want to uh, hand crank the cutter bit to get it towards the front of the bore. Once you do that, you come up to your clamp, break it loose. Once you've broken it loose, you push the bar back so that when you draw it back up, the cutter bit does not drag the cylinder. It'll leave a little mark, which usually will uh, hone out if, if you do leave one. It's not a real big deal, but I'm cranking it back out. Okay, now you slide your bar out of the way, and there's our nice cut cylinder that should be somewhere in between, we'll say, 57 and 58 thousandths. Now I have a tool board, you just hang all your tools up so you've got them handy. I've got this dial bore gauge set at 4060. Let's see what we've got. And it is cutting roughly a four inch and fifty eight thousandths. So this one's cutting four inch and fifty eight thousandths hard to see on the uh, camera and it's cutting it the same this bar cuts true from top to bottom which is really good it shows there's not a lot of wear on the bar itself some of them you get the bars will actually have taper in them but uh, this one's a good one it's been taken care of the paints a little rough on it but it's uh, mechanically sound and not worn out once you've uh, checked your hole, if you're satisfied where your bit is cutting, you go to the next hole. And to remove the bit, you know, this tool, all it is is a ring with a curve at the end, and it catches in the bottom of the cutter bit. You use two hands, but you pull it out. And then you repeat the uh, process on the next cylinder.